Hello, you're watching Extra Time with me, Gary James. And now very much part of the team at Lisa Smith. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Gary. Hi. And joining us on the sofa, footballer Lee Hendry. Hi, mate. You're right. Hi. Brilliant. Uh, now, an interesting one for our clubs this week. Villa taking the points at home to the Baggies. Wolves, well, they were flying, then lost to Bournemouth. And Warsaw, well, they hadn't taken anything out of the last few games. They travelled down to Yeovil on Tuesday and came home with the three points. Blues saw the return of former manager Lee Clark with his Blackpool side. Not the best of games, but the Blue Boys took all three points with the only goal of the game from Andrew Shinney. Now, this weekend, it sees a rematch between Aston Villa and West Bromwich Albion in the FA Cup sixth round for a place in the semi-final. Lee, uh, you're a former Villa player, a uh, much-needed win for them on Tuesday, do you think? Uh, what do you think is going to happen tomorrow? I think, well, you know, obviously getting the result was, was vital midweek. Um, three points was, you know, in desperate need. Um, you know, especially looking at the league position, I think, you know, if you ask anyone, I think the league's far more important at the moment than the yeah. cup. Um, but what a fantastic result, you know. I think going into the weekend's game against Albion again, they'll fancy their chances. And, and to be fair, you know, I think, you know, getting the three points um, going into Saturday's game, I think Tony Pulis's men will be thinking, you know, it, we've got it all to do. And, mm. and in all fairness, you know, I think Villa will go and nick something. You think they will? Yeah, they I do. Yeah. 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 What about Lisa, what do you reckon? Yeah, I think like Lee, it was a really good debate at the game the other night because some of the older fans were saying we really want to see an FA Cup victory in our lifetime there out at Wembley. But the rest of us were kind of saying, yeah, but the league's so important. If you, Like you say, if you drop three points against your derby rivals, you start seeing that slide. And Tim Sherwood's come in and we've been waiting for his first win and you could see the relief on his face and the players' faces and they'll all be pumped up now for this cup game on Saturday. Could turn the season around. Yeah, well, it, it could, it's taken them out of the, the drop zone slightly, hasn't it, on that. But, but as, a, as a player, because obviously you're, you are still playing, um, in, in um, is it, it the name that you just played the other night, didn't you? Yeah, we play, playing for Baseford. Baseford. Uh, down in Nottingham, it's uh, sort of Midland Comp Prem, so it's a bit of a, bit of a <laughs> come down from the Premier League. But <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good, it's good fun. You know, it yeah. keeps me fit and stuff. Yeah. So, I'm but, so that's why I say you're still playing. So as, as a player and... Maybe if you think back to, to when you were playing Premiership football for, for Villa, in the position now, um, is, is it right? Should, should they be really still going for the, for the, for the Cup? Or, or what do you think, as a, a Tim, as a manager, will be... Will we, will, it's annoying if they lose, yeah. but if they do, but they stay up, is that, more, is that what we're saying is more important? I've, I've got to say, I think staying up's most important. But, you know, I, I had this conversation last week about uh, Tim Sherwood coming in. Um, and, and to be fair, I watched them at Newcastle and I thought they did excellent uh, yeah. at times. You know, they're getting shots off target. But I think with Tim coming in, you know, he could be a big saviour for the club. You know, he could keep them up yeah. and he could bring some silverware to Villa Park, which, you know, is long overdue, really. Yeah, and absolutely. all of a sudden, we've had a good season, you know, yeah. in, so many, you know, in yeah. so many ways. So I think, you know, the cup game now, he's got his three points under his, under his belt. The fans are all happy. You know, the confidence is high again. He'll fancy his chances Saturday, and I think, you know, I, I personally think they'll go and do him again. Yeah, yeah, and, really and he's think. putting bums on seats now, isn't it? We hope for, for this weekend. Yeah, I mean, the, the crowd was slightly disappointing the other night. Um, it was on TV, um, but I think the fact that now they've got that win, it's a home derby, and I, I think they're looking at 40, 42,000 on Saturday. It'd be an amazing atmosphere. And Yeah, I mean, the, th the thing is with that is that, you know, you look at Villa's form of late, and, and it hasn't been good. No. And, you know, it's been building up and building up to this. And, you know, when Lambert was in charge, it was slowly drifting. You know, the crowds were going down. But now we've got a, a three-pointer under our belt. And, and, you know, all of a sudden the fans are talking, you know, they, they want to come down and, and sort of cheer the lads on. And I think that is a massive, massive part of, of having them down there. You know, I said the other night that they're like the 12th man, really. Um, yeah. and, and to be fair, if you can get that Villa Park packed out now for the last 10, 11 games of the season, you know, obviously it's not that many games at home, but, you know, I think, you know, that will give us a massive lift yeah. and, and hopefully just drift us away at that, that sort of bottom section, really. Mm. And, and do you think, um, from the Baggies' point of view, Tony Poulis there, he's, he's well known for, for playing defensive and let's nick one at the other end. Do you think now after Tuesday's game where he's lost that, do you think he, he might ch change anything? Or? I, I think, with I mean, I played under Tony at Stoke uh, oh, okay. for a short spell yeah. uh, when I was on loan there and... <laughs> You know, Tony will never change his format of playing. Um, as a manager, he's always been pretty defensive. He doesn't concede many goals. 
Um, and that's, that's what he's always been like that. So I think, you know, he won't change his, his way of playing of what he did from, from midweek. There's, there's no doubt about that. He'll be coming into that game, you know, trying to push them lads to try and get a result, to get one over on Villa, really. Yeah. But, you know, I, I just think, you know, there'll be no change in the way West Brom, because it was, you know, in fairness, it was a tight game midweek. Yeah. So yeah. I, I don't see it being much change from the midweek game, but obviously we've got some silverware to play mm. for. OK, uh, and you mentioned you played for Tony at, at Stoke. So, as a manager, is, is, he, is he a laid-back manager? Is he a, <laughs> is he a Ferguson, like, you know, full-on, stamps his feet? No, he's but definitely not. No, I mean, <laughs> to, Tony's, you know, you, you, I, personally, uh, when, um, you know, Villa were going through a bit of a, a, a tough period um, and there was talk of, you know, of, of Paul Lambert getting the sack and yeah. I, I just thought what an ideal, you know, opportunity to get someone like him in. Because, you know, he wears his heart on his sleeve. Yeah. Uh, and you can see that. I mean, look how far he came with Stoke. You yeah. know, he brought them out of the Championship and, and secured that concrete position in the Premier League, got them in Europe. And, you know, what a fantastic, you know, I, I personally, what a fantastic manager. He did it at Palace, mm. where he's coming for that short space yeah. of time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. and he, he's, in, in fairness, he's done it since he's gone in at West Brom yeah. as well. You know, I think if they would have won um, midweek, I think that would have been them safe of, of relegation. Mm. And to be, to be honest with you, he certainly won't mess about in that change room. He will have everyone red or raving to go on Saturday because he's not one of them who's a quiet manager. He certainly he'd give a few of the lads, you know, right tailing off in the change room at times, um, which obviously it, it does get you going. It gets you motivated. Mm. Um, you know, as a manager, I think if, if you're quiet and timid, you know, I, I don't think you get the best out of the lads when you need to. And again. What about Tim Sherwood? Is he the, in your eyes, is he the right guy that's coming now? Or, or was it the fact that he was the only one, really, that was available? Well, they, you know, they say, you know, managers wasn't available. There's always managers available to come into a club. Um, you know, obviously there's managers, like you see Pardew, that, that was at Newcastle. You know, no one never seen that coming, uh, where, he, you know, he's dropped down to Palace and, and pulled them out of trouble. But, you know, I think what, what you've got to think of it is that Tim... He's been in the Premier League. He's had great experience. He's been around some fantastic coaches. You know, why not give someone like that a chance? Mm. Um, you, uh, personally, I think who who do you bring in? You paid massive money, and and maybe, you know, been there and done it. This man wants to prove a point, and that's my big big issue is that you've got someone in who's passionate about about football. He's wanted to get into it. You know, he's been looking around. You know, people say oh, he went in for the West Brom job. He's been linked with every job. He wants a job, yeah. you know, there's no doubt about it. And he wants to prove a point that he is a good manager. And I personally think it'll be a, a great selection. I certainly do, you know. I, th I think, again, I've said it, I think he could be a legend there. You know, you look at it, he's coming for that short spell. Mm. He could John keep Gregory, Villa up. Yeah. John Gregory came in, he was pretty untried and tested, really. But, mm. you know, he came in and almost but got John Villa winning yeah. Premier League. But he's a passionate man. Yeah. You know, yeah. And that's what I think it needed. It needs yeah. at the time. You see mm. the photos of him you know, after the game and, he, you know, he's over the moon. It's like, all of a sudden, we've won a cup final. Well, mm. it, you know, every game now is a cup final for Villa. Yeah. And with having someone passionate at the helm, I think it's, you know, it's fantastic. I think you'll do a great job. We hope so, don't we? Yeah, we I mean, so. I actually bumped into Tim Sherwood yeah. on the stairs after the game on uh, the other night. And uh, I didn't know who it was at first. I just saw this, <laughs> s someone in a tracksuit, <laughs> like jogging up the stairs, bouncing literally like Tigger. And I thought, who's this? And then I looked and I went, oh, hi, Gaffer. I looked at him. <laughs> And he was just, you know, he's so enthusiastic and, you know, and I just thought, well, that for me says it all. That's all I ask for in a manager is that. And you can imagine that enthusiasm in the dressing room, really lifting you the lads. Up, yeah, you, you, you know. certainly can. I, I, think t I think, again, him playing in the Premier League, knowing what it's all about, you know, like you said, you know, would you see him Lambert running up and down the stairs and jumping around. <laughs> we don't know, do we? You know, it's one of them. I haven't seen him do that much. But, no, you know, I think <laughs> Tim coming yeah. in is a completely yeah. different character. Yeah. And you can understand what he says. <laughs> yeah, well. And he's brought in people like Zogbia that are experienced, have been around the club but not been getting any luck in. People like Jack Grealish, who, you know, came on quite nervously. I saw mm. him after the game and he admitted the nerves hit him first 10 minutes. And then by the end, this is the best time I've ever played because it was just the enthusiasm was there. I think with the, with the new man coming in, though, it, it just puts the whole squad back up for grabs, don't it? You know, yeah. I remember, like you say, John Gregory coming in and I was thinking, you know, he was my coach, you know, he knows what I'm about. I can play in that team and I can pick, you can pick me. So everyone's up for grabs to be selected. That's right, mm. absolutely. All right. Um, so, 
Come on, then. I'm going to ask you. For tomorrow's <laughs> game, give me a prediction, Mr Hendry. I, I'm, go, I'm definitely going Villa win. I'm going to go, I'm going to go two, 2 1 again. Um, I've, just got, I've got this funny feeling that Villa are going to be high, you know, high as a kite at the moment. And I just think, you know, the scoring goals again, I think there's definitely a 2 1 win there. And we've got all the baggy fans at the moment throwing <laughs> things at the TV set as they're watching. <laughs> <laughs> don't break your TV sets, please. Don't break your TV sets. <laughs> Oh dear! Um, right, well we're going to we're going to talk more in the, in the second half because uh, the halftime whistle is, is about to blow, <laughs> and we'll find a little bit more about you, know, you and, and the player when you first started. Go a bit more back to that and, and what you're up to these days and where the yeah. future is going to hold. So um, that's it. We're off for a, for a pie and a bovril, <laughs> and we'll see you in just a few minutes in the second half here on Extra Time. And welcome back. Well, we're, uh, we're fed and watered now. This is the second half of Extra Time with me, Gary James, Lisa Smith and our very special guest, Lee Hendry. Now, uh, Lee, we've, we've spoken in the first half. We've, we've done the Villa Baggies game tomorrow. You've said 2-1. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. I probably know what you'd say. Villa. Villa, yeah, OK. Yeah. So, Baggies fans, you know. <laughs> they can win all their rest of the games. OK. Um, <laughs> let's, let's go back to, uh, to the early days then, Lee. Uh, first of all, uh, a lot of, uh, certainly Blues fans will know that your dad played for Blues, Paul Hendry, back in the, in the 70s. Uh, that's obviously where you, where you get your skills from and your love for football, I take it, is it? Yeah, it is. A, you know, I used to, obviously didn't see much of dad uh, playing for Birmingham, but, you know, followed his career, you know, as a boy mm. uh, growing up, you know, and he was at the likes of Halifax, Stockport, um, you know, obviously going watching games with him. Um, you know, he managed non-league teams, Tamworth. And, you know, I was always with him, you know, getting the balls in, yeah. getting the cones in, as the usual, <laughs> the, the lad does. Go on, go and get the cones in. Um, but obviously, you know, he'd set little drills up for me, you know, when the lads are warming up and stuff like mm. that. So, I, you know, our backgrounds, you know, have been football all, all our life, you know. Mm. We've got, we got the, one of my cousins who's just signed for, for West Ham. Oh, wow. Um, has come down from Scotland, which yeah. is, a, you know, fantastic. So he gets to see a, a, another youth sort of coming through the system, yeah. which is, you know, is fantastic for us. So, but Hendry's, a, you know, the, the well-known for him. Obviously, we've got John who was up at Middlesbrough as well. Yeah, so. didn't your brother play? My it? brother played, yeah, yeah. He was at Morecambe for a short spell. He was at, mm. he was at Warsaw. He was at Villa as a kid. Um, yeah, so it's, it's definitely it's in that blood, 100%. It's, 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 yeah. it's a footballing dynasty. <laughs> <There's nothing laughs> <there. laughs> um, well, you started at Villa in, in 1995, I believe. Yeah. It was, and you stayed there for, what, 14 years, was it? Yeah, I was. I'm, I was there as a kid, um, you know, obviously come through the old um, YTS system, yeah. um, which was, you know, it was a great experience, a, a fantastic club, um, you know, I was, you know, I was fortunate enough to make, um, make my way through the system and, and Obviously, play for a team that I support yep. uh, as a young boy was, you know, was a great honour in itself. Really, um, you know, to sit on the terraces and, and watch some of the games where, you know, Big Ron was in charge and the big cup game where Kingy scored the penalty. And yeah. I remember being in the uh, the paper with a, a boy fan, and I was stood next to Ron, but I was one of the YTs, you know. And it was just, <laughs> it was just, it, you know, what a great experience. There's so many stories to tell as a, as, yeah. a, as a young lad, but you know, fantastic that you know I ended up achieving my goals at the end of it. Mm. And, and what was it What was it like then? I, I think it was probably a little bit, bef well, well, a few years before you, but um, Mickey Rathbone used to play for the Blues, you know, a physio, I think, working for, for England and that. Uh, but I think he was playing in the, the late 70s, maybe early 80s, and, and he moved around a bit. But I, he, he had a book out last year that I read, and when he was, tr when he was at Blues and they used to train at... Um, uh, just down from the airport, Elmden, Elmden Lane. Yeah, yeah. It's not there anymore. They're yeah. Obviously, they're somewhere without West Hills now. Yeah. But in his book, it's the stories he tells us about him as a lad training and hating it yeah. and, and being shouted at and having to clean <laughs> the boots. Did, in your time, in the mid-90s, that's what you had to do as an apprentice then? Was yeah, it? yeah it, was, it was cleaning the boots. It was... Um, I, I mean, I've got, I've got... Well, I'll tell you a story. It was <laughs> fantastic. It was, do you remember, obviously, Fash come to Villa, didn't they? Yeah. And... Um, Big Jim Paul, the kit man, said to me, when uh, you're doing Fash's boots, I was like, oh, I pulled in these big Quasar boots, about size 15s. <laughs> and obviously they were the same colour as, you know, Claret the, yeah. the, um, boots. And he, he went, can I have a word with you? And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, of course, Fash. Took me just off the boot room, sh shut the door. I'm in the pitch black with Fash, thinking, what's going to go on here? <laughs> and I just felt these big boots whack me in the chest. He went, they're my tools, make sure they're clean for a Saturday. And I was like, OK, Fash. And he walked out the door. <laughs> Well, I had to take them home, dry them on the heat. And I was like, it stinks of sweat in here. Can we get these boots? I went, they're fascist, Mum. I can't, you know. 
but you know the, the stories like that you can just go on and, and sure. when Big Ron was there um, you know I remember cleaning the, the floors and stuff he'd go hey youngin call me over uh, he's go and get your mate Darren and it was Darren Byfield oh, and yeah. um, he'd say you don't want to be doing that go and take the dogs for a walk will you and he used to send us around body when I was like the lads were like have you got to do that so we used to get some sticks off yeah we used to walk around with these the little shih tzu dogs it was brilliant oh it's class yeah class. you don't imagine big running walking his two little dogs <laughs> bang, 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 unbelievable green, honestly <laughs> unbelievable oh good I, I mentioned him big run I mean he's, he's he's often seen down down the, down the blues watching games and at Villa obviously watching games and stuff but again there's another character isn't he you know there's not many of them about these days uh, the well, again what was he like to to play under. He was, he was brilliant. I mean, I was only a young kid at the time when, uh, when the gaff was there, really. And, um, you know, he always used to sit and sort of watch the, the youth team, which I think is important. You know, I think if you've got the manager out there, and, and I'd look round and I'd see the likes of Andy Towns and Kevin Richardson watching the game. And it was only recently uh, the gaffer said to the big Ronnie, he said, um, he said, you know, when you used to play, we all used to come over after training and watch the games. He went, they all used to come over just to watch you. And I went, I was quite shocked. And he went, because of you know, how talented you was, he said, they just always used to go on about you. He said, yeah. that's why I used to drag you over uh, some training days. And he put me in with the first team. <laughs> and it was, you know, what an experience right. it was yeah. to be around some internationals like, you know, Andy Townsend. And, you know, I mean, it, it was fantastic. And yeah. I think that, as a, as a youngster, you know, just give me so much confidence. Um, and that was just coming through the system. I mm -hmm. just thought, it was, you know, it was an absolute fantastic gesture to get me over. But, you know, um, he, he, he's an absolute legend, he, uh, he's, he's Ron. And, uh, you know, I'd love to see him back in the game. Yeah. Um, I think he's a character, you know, I could sit and listen to his stories and mm -hmm. listen to him sing all day. Well, I'm <laughs> not <laughs> listening to him oh, sing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you yeah, made that record? Did he release that record, oh, didn't he, I think? Oh, brilliant. He was an arter, I think he was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, do, do you think, do you think he, he wants, he'd want to come back in the game now? Or is he quite happy doing what he's doing? Well, I've, I've just come back from Dubai with him and, and oh. he was our manager for the England Legends. We played England, Scotland. and. Yeah. Um, Listen, he loves it. He absolutely loves it. He's on the side giving me loads of stick and <laughs> all the lads stick in the changing rooms. You know, he loves it. And I was going to ask you where you got that tan from. Yeah, yeah. Come back and, I mean, let's face it, Big Ron's got a better tan than David Dickinson. <laughs> I mean, so. I'm jealous of his tan, actually. I said that too. Um, no, he, you know, he's great. He, he, he's, he's one of them that, you know, he's, you look at the characters in football and he was, you know, definitely one of them. Yeah. I, you know, I used to remember watching him sitting up in the stands and then all of a sudden you see him storming down that the byline <laughs> and all the fans get, you know, because he was, you know, he wasn't happy with the way the game was going. Yeah. Sit down and he'd have his glasses on pointing out and then next week two subs had come on. <laughs> you know, it was, he, he was just one of them, you know, one of them guys who was just, like I said, his stories that he comes out with of, of past games, of, of, of past stuff that he's done as a manager, you know, it's second to none, he's superb. Yeah, he's, lovely, he's a lovely, lovely guy. You mentioned there, really, you've just come back from Dubai, you were playing uh, over there. Um, is that a regular, is that an annual event that you go yeah, to? Yeah, do, we do it every year. It's, yeah. um, you know, it, we have like the likes of Des Walker over there, John Beresford, Dave Besson, and the Scots have like, you know, John Collins. He wasn't there this year, uh, obviously a bit up at Celtic, but, you know, they've got a great Mc McAllister. Um, so you can imagine the England Scots. Wow. It's it is, it's almost like a derby game, Villa yeah. Blues, really. But it's um, yeah. well, they, they never beat us. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. That's and, and you mentioned England Scotland. So your international career under twenty one. Yep. And then you had just the one cap, I think, against was it against the Czech Republic. Yeah, it was. Um, unfortunately, I mean the one cap wonders, which I, I suppose yeah, you, got one. you know I've got one cap got that one. no one can take away from me, yeah. but. Yeah, but obviously I've come through the system of, of England really because I played under 18s, got a cap under 18s, got a under 21, well, quite a few under 21 caps. I got a B cap, an unusual, the last B game uh, when Matt Letitia scored a hat trick, I think it was at the Dal, it was. Mm. Um, and then obviously got my full cap. So, you know, I've got a full range of them, which is, you know, is great to show the, the kids as they get older. Yeah. Yeah, no, that is brilliant. Moving on then, um, outside of football, I know you're up to quite a few things. You're a busy lad at the moment, and I appreciate you taking time out and, and coming and having a chat. Uh, tell us about the academy. So, super, I've set my own academy up, the Lee Hendry Academy, which has, has been, I feel like I'm back training every day. Um, you know, I think when you come out of, of football, I think it's important that you set yourself goals and targets. and. You know, I sort of went through a rough time where I've got through the other end of it and now, you know, I just feel like I'm back playing football. I'm, I'm teaching young kids 
from the age of 16 to, mm. to 18. You know, we're always looking to recruit. Um, I just think it's a great opportunity to, to have some, some perfect coaching. I say perfect, I'm talking, listen to me. <laughs> some great <laughs> coaching, yeah. yeah. <laughs> from not, you know, the, the sort of looking at, you know, the sort of things that happen f through my life of football where I've been up, down and all over the place. And I think it's great that I've got that experience to pass on to these kids. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we've got, some good, we've got some good youngsters that hopefully we can try and push back into the system yeah. that... You know, a lot of kids don't get the opportunity from 16 onwards uh, because they sort of fall away and there's, you know, there's a lot of foreigners coming into our game at the moment. And I yeah. just think it's a great opportunity to still have some great coaching, you know, behind the belt and experience from myself. Um, that hopefully we can get these kids back into the game, which I think is needed. Yeah, and, and very briefly, and we'll get you back in another time to talk more about it, you're going to yeah. do the London Marathon. I am. <laughs> yeah, it's your routine, yeah. I am, yeah, I am. I mean, it, again, I've, you know, I've, always, I've been quite a fit lad. Yeah. Uh, you know, most of my game is based on you know, getting up and down the pitch. Um, but to do that is going to be a massive, Brilliant. massive thing for and me. And I can't wait. Now. Yeah, and I'm in training. I'm, I'm, I'm giving a, going to give it a good go. I just want to raise as much money as I possibly yeah. can, really. OK, well, we'll get you back on and we'll talk more about Thank that you. Uh, another time, mate. We'll really appreciate your help. Um, well, the final whistle is about to blow. Thanks to Lisa. Very much thanks Thank to you. Lee. Thank Cheers, you mate. Thank you. Um, the Villa versus Baggies game tomorrow. And if we're not talking about your sport or you have any suggestions of guests you'd like to see on the show, then please email us. It's extra time at bigcentre.tv. But for now, that's full time on Extra Time. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you Monday. Bye-bye.